Guys, one of the ants actually bit me in the neck. <laughs> this is actually mind-blowingly good. So we've got some ant eggs sorted in a nano... And we're gonna make it into a nice package. Are we gonna do some origami, Dad? <laughs> Let's make it into a swan. So the ants have transmutated into an ant... Oh, Ben! You have an ant on your shoulder! Seriously! Where? Yeah. And your shoulder! Ben, oh, ben. Oh, right there! Oh. Ben! Oh, ben! <laughs> ben! <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Call me Felix. And I'm here in my father's ancestral town of Piddig, Ilocos Norte, in the northwest of Luzon and the northwest of the Philippines. In one of my earlier videos, I took a Christmas feast video of a live goat served up four different ways and using a traditional and some would say extreme Ilocano recipes. And today we're going to eat ant eggs and not just any old ant eggs. These are ant eggs on our hacienda and we I'm going to show you how they are harvested and how they are cooked and we'll probably cook them in several ways so uh, stay tuned <laughs> Right down to business this morning, we're going to get one of those ant egg nests from the mahogany tree at the back of the house here. So there are four ant nests in this tree. So if you see the brown parts here, look how elaborate those are. So where you see those brown bran uh, brown leaves, those are all the ants doing. Are you taking it? Yeah. He's good at it. So they're going to take down the ant nest and they had to shorten the bamboo pole so that uh, you can get the right size of the ants. Oh boy, look at this. So we're at same safe distance from the rain or the potential barrage of ants and ant eggs falling. And it's a somewhat breezy day here. So thankfully it's not going in our direction, it's kind of going away. Oh boy. Oh my. There you go. Goodness. But these are small ants. They don't have a carry the eggs out of there. They don't have a ton of eggs from what we see here. Okay. Okay. There you go. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, they're big. The eggs. They're, car they're carrying them out though. These are what you would call red tree ants, or I think the technical term is, I'm not getting into Latin here. They're just called wow. weaver ants. Okay. Now, I have to admit right now, being relatively close to the ant nest, yeah. I kind of feel as if they're on me or as far as my arms and such. Third time's a charm, I think, hopefully. So, are we on the third third nest, guys? Yeah. Third nest. There you go. So, let's see if this is the bonanza we've been looking for, for ants and ant eggs. Oh, it bit me. You did? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like over here. Okay. Guys, one of the ants actually bit me in the neck. <laughs> Apparently my paranoia is justified. Because, I mean, I'm not that near the nest or that's going down. But you know what? You never know. Maybe this is the ash and fall of the ants, as I like to call it. Maybe I'm just gonna stand right here, rather than kind of get involved. JP, kill it with fire! <laughs> oh, 
And also the breeze is kind of, if you can see it, there are leaves falling and maybe there are some like, you know, big ants riding them like the Silver Surfer or yeah. something like that. Come to avenge their brothers and sisters. I mean, like, I mean, brothers and sisters of the ant hive. Yeah. <laughs> the traditional way or one traditional way of snuffing out the ants is to take a torch of like, a, you know, any smoking sort of lantern. And it's meant to drive the ants away while you have another person take down the nest. Now, what we've done here is probably the way that's most direct and it's the way that's going to get you bit even if you're just an innocent bystander filming. And that is just to take a bamboo pole with an improvised rice sack and get the ants and the eggs that way. Now that we've uh, finished all the quelling, I think we can get to the cooking. So, we're doing some uh, sorting here, some sorting processes. And uh, what are you doing there with the water over there? Just sorting out the ants well, we're putting, from the eggs? We're putting the ants in the bowl of water and then it seems as if the bigger eggs mm -hmm. fall down. And so see if the bigger eggs them. fall down. Okay. So then we scrape the rest of it from the top. Oh, okay. Got it. Some personnel introductions here, people. So my father here, he's going to be the cook of the day. Then, you know, no pressure on you, Dad, for your debut of cooking. No big cook. No, and pressure. in the most exotic way possible. And this here is my cousin, JP. You may remember him from such memorable <laughs> food videos such as Live Goat Cooked Four Ways for Christmas. And, uh, oh, there's no other video. We're, okay, so we're, this is the sequel, people. We're venturing off to new exotic foods, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. it's the Filipino food that no one ever told you about. That even other Filipinos don't even know about. <laughs> Except other, other Filipinos won't eat. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what you would call the Ilocano Ingenuity Campaign. Or, I don't know if this will get people to visit Ilocos Norte, but, you know. Is this know. protein? Yeah, a lot of protein and... Uh, of the can so one thing I know here is that the people here in Ilocos, here in the north, are known for their practical yeah, ingenuity, everything. is what I would call it. Practical ingenuity. And so that involves resourcefulness as far as what kinds of food we eat, right? Um, and of course, when we did the goat video, we saw how basically no, nothing is wasted from the goat and nothing is wasted here about the ants and the eggs either, unless you're going to incorporate the ants, Dad, in some way. No? Just really, it's really just separating the ants, right? I think, yeah, I think we're just, chicken he wants there. the best part, which is the big eggs, so I think that's... Uh -huh. Now I don't remember, <laughs> so I don't think I introduced Ben in my last video because he was kind of off in the background and whatever, so. Eating. Yeah, and maybe drinking. So this here is, <laughs> so this here is Ben, JP's brother. So um, every now and then you might see them do some sort of brotherly mischief. So here we are, sifting through just to get this ant maybe can cook it, you know. It's kind of like mining for gold in a way. Yeah, it is. Huh? Here's the size of the ant, people. You want big. Huh? Let me see. Yeah. Where's my finger? Hey. That's a good shot. Yeah. 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 Those are the ant eggs. Okay, okay. You should put one of the ants on my finger too. Now that it's live and now that it's long dead. I have one. I'll put a live one on your finger? No! <laughs> In case you're wondering if there are survivors, yes, there's one. Look at that. <laughs> there's a bunch. So, there's a bunch. So, the thing is, I think scientists and biologists, they can only guess what ants are thinking. They can only, of course, we can never Come enter on, the sorry. mind of an ant until we've got, mastered the technology of such. But you always have to wonder if that ant on the precipice here is viewing this like a war zone scene in which like your comrades got massacred or something like that. If it's got feelings and such. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, that's true. I would think that too. So, 
And of course, you, we've talked about things like, especially with ants and bees, they have what you would call a hive mind, as if they have some sort of telepathic consciousness that is unitary rather than distinct like us humans. So it leaves some very interesting questions about cognition and memories and emotions of animals because, you know, we humans can never enter the mind or if they even have minds because the mind is a sort of construction of or a mental model of how we think. You know? So you're thinking in layman's terms like the queen may have possibly like a conscious mind of all the dead or they have like a hive mind who knows yeah. again how we perceive the universe is very different from these ants and we don't really know what it's like to be in the mind of an ant does it have a distinct um consciousness is it telepathic with everyone else i mean there probably has to be some way to communicate and yeah. oh my goodness look at that there's an ant charging on so to us humans, this looks like one of those war scenes, like like the, like any war scene. You can think of like you know Roman times, like you know Roman legions laying waste to Carthaginians on the battlefield or something. But I'm making stuff up. Or the Civil War, and you see like flags strewn about and smoke just about. And then you always have in the films like one sole survivor trying to make sense of all the carnage or just trying to survive. Look Do at that ants one. trying to save that one last thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at survival. Oh, yeah. Speaking of what you're and, talking about. And uh, getting one of that. Now, I wonder if this is really just about... Wow, look at that. Instinct or what? Yeah. Let me try and focus out. There we go. Look at that, guys. Imagine we torch this pan. Imagine that we put water to them. And you know what? These ants, I mean, I think we build an image of them. Nature. The human understanding is that they're resilient. And God, by golly, yes, they are resilient. Look at that go. Look, look, look at that. Look at that. It's still there. He's chopped off there. And then eggs. See people, there's 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 like a silver lining in all of this. I mean you might be one of those ants who survive out of thousands here that you know perished in the rousing of the nest. Okay, so here you guys go. So we've got some ant eggs sorted in a banana leaf with a few ants thrown in there for good measure because you can't really sift them totally in a banana leaf. And this is ready to be steamed. And just put a dash of salt in there and it's ready to go, says Dad. And how long would this um, cook? Maybe 10 minutes or something. 10 minutes? And yeah. that's sufficient enough? And then we'll get a good taste of those ant eggs? Hopefully. Okay, so we'll just call this the ant egg custard with a little bit of ants and it's ready for steaming. And we're gonna make it into a nice package. Are we gonna do some origami, Dad? Let's make it into a swan. So the ants have transmutated into an ant. Oh, Ben, you have an ant on your shoulder. Seriously. Where? On your shoulder. That's oh, right, right there. Oh. Ben. Ouch. Ben. Ben. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it fucking hurts and look at my cross and put it off. <laughs> Let's take a whiff of that, guys. Hmm. It reminds me of um, goodness rice. Mm -hmm. Suman, no? Suman, yes. Yeah, so what do we call Suman? Taran. Taran. Okay, guys. Down the hatch. Okay. Some thoughts. First of all, it is true that once you bite into it, it pops. It pops like a corn kernel. And that's exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like sweet white corn. Sweet white corn. That's exactly what it tastes like. So it has the texture of a corn kernel that's been hollowed out. So once you bite it, it just goes. It's not a Rice Krispie at all. I was thinking, oh, based off what people have told me, oh, it's going to bounce off like a Rice Krispie. No, it reminds me of... Um, the texture reminds me of couscous, maybe. Like a really hollow type of couscous or a pearl pasta, perhaps. But really, to me, what resonates is um, a corn kernel. 
that's really light, really hollow. Yeah. It bites, and then there's a little burst, a little burst of sweetness, like white corn, fresh white corn. It's quite good. That's why I think it is true. The bigger, the better the, the ant egg, because you taste more of that sweetness. It probably lingers a little more. Ta-da! Okay, guys, we have a modest picnic and accompany our ant egg custard. So we have some crispy fried pork, which is called bagnet, with some dipping sauce here with bagoong, tomato, and some onion, and some mang tomas to dip it in as well. Mang tomas is like lechum sauce. There's some nice big drumsticks that JP just whipped up in 30 minutes. And of course, you need course. to have some rice. Yeah, mm. the main course. And cooked corned beef. And then dad is, he cannot wait for raw corned beef. And he couldn't wait to open the, the main attraction is this. <laughs> the boos. The ant egg custard. He can't, he can't wait to dig in. Morning. Oh. Morning. So there we are. So, should we dig in with our hands here? Yeah. 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 I'm going to take a bunch. I'm going to try it too. Let's see how this hands out. Are you going to just eat it like that? Yeah. Okay, the unsanitary <laughs> way. You're not going to contract the coronavirus. It's all cooked. It tastes like sweet corn. It's creamy. Yeah. A little bit sweet. Yeah, it's weird. Can, can you, oh, it's good. Can you feel the there we go, guys. I'll try oh, a no. bunch. No. Mm. Uh-uh. You can, you can tie me to the chair, you can... No, hell no. It's good. Hundred no, no, no. pesos. Mm -hmm. Right? Nah. Okay. Now that I've tried a bunch, nah. it really reminds me of white corn mixed with suman. Mm -hmm. Except with the uh, the glutinous. So you yeah. taste a little sugary taste. Like, yeah. with the... And I think it's, of course, imbued with the banana leaf. A little bit of nuttiness, no? Yeah, there's a bit yeah. of nuttiness. So if you try a bunch, it really does taste nice sweetness. And very simple. <laughs> Just with a little bit of salt. That's and awesome. And a, and a little. Okay. It really does taste like white corn. There's a little savory at the end, too. Yeah. I really like it. It's actually really good. It is quite nice. And refreshing, actually. It pops in your, in your mouth. Mm -hmm. pop rock. And I'm going to try that ant. Let's just see what the ant tastes like. Let me just be adventurous. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah, a little citrusy. Try the ant. Okay, I'm gonna get some ants on this one. Why is that? There's ones with the dark thing inside. There's ants. There's the ants in there. <laughs> oh, okay. The other one's white. Those are white this show. There's a bit of ants in this, so maybe it's gonna taste a little sour just to negate the corn taste out of it. <laughs> it tastes like corn to you. <laughs> JP, does it taste like corn to you? Yeah. It really does taste like sweet corn. With a little bit of sweet nuttiness. Sweet corn? Wait. And if you put a little bit of ant, there's a little meatiness to it too. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of sour. A tiny bit really of citrus. Much. Tiny so, bit of citrus. It's so weird how an insect can have that citrus taste. Odd, yeah. But and it tastes, good. it tastes a bit meaty too. It's very interesting. So... I'll definitely try this again once it's in season. Once we really, because these are relatively young eggs. They're not as big as these are pretty small eggs. They are not due to be uh, harvested. Yeah, only in April. But they have what nice, is, refreshing white corn it, it taste. Early. White corn sweetness and mm. little. Mm. Yeah, there's a goodness. <laughs> okay, now let's try it with the raw corn beef. I'm gonna try this. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna I'm use a fork. That's a that's more than enough. All right, let's put some <laughs> a bunch of these eggs on top. On the raw corn beef. On the raw corn beef. I want to see how this tastes. I'm really curious. Let's see if we have ourselves a gastronomic wonder With the that, that Gordon Ramsay is gonna steal from me. <laughs> okay, Gordon Ramsay, if you're watching this, you better not steal this. If they say this is the greatest thing ever. Okay, down it go. It's like raw corned beef, but with more texture. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, actually the proportion is wrong. 
How about you, the little Bentley eggs? Dog? Yeah, because it was like too much of the corned beef. Now, corned beef is actually pretty good. Raw. Uh, <laughs> nice developed this cook, dude. Okay. You really taste the corniness of it when it's raw like this? Okay. Alright. Let me take some more of the egg. Oh, there's more of it here. More came off. It's your commodity. Come on! Mm. Why don't make, you try dipping? Topping that on top of the... Okay. The palate the is clean. I'm going to try equal proportion of ant egg to raw corn beef. Let's do it. The corned beef actually overrides oh, that it? taste. Never mind, I didn't I didn't discover anything interesting, Dad. <laughs> Our cook who was not here yesterday basically said you were doing it wrong. JP just said, run, run, go go up the street, okay. I was still in my pajamas taking an afternoon nap and there. <laughs> That's how it is. So I'm staying at a very safe distance. Very safe. Because these ants, they get around. Oh, here we go. Here comes the torch. I think this is more... This is like more skill exhibited than yeah, no Manung Lito yesterday. Really fast, huh? Yeah. Yesterday was kind of like a... Yeah, amateur hour. Yeah, look, look at that. I mean, the the right amount of the um, newspaper getting burned. And look at that. Not even messing around. Just get in and around. Move that around and just neutralize those ants. Yesterday, we had a hard time. Man. Yesterday, we had a hard time, yeah. He says that they burned... What is it called? Uh, uh, town. Mm. Area. This is how the professionals do it, people. I'm casting a spell, I think. I know. <laughs> yeah, it almost feels like you're doing some sort of shamanic ritual with that, or healing, Medi yeah. medicinal ritual. ritual. I said, are you a witch? She said, no, I don't have a ritual. <laughs> okay. Oh, fair enough. So what's the next step, John? Hello, uh, Let them off. Maybe. So you gotta sort still? Wash. Wash? But you gotta sort, huh? Can you eat the really small ones? Uh oh, sir. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, why not? <laughs> so by now, they've all been neutralized, JP? Yeah, it looks like there's only a few running, running around. And mostly... All the eggs have been left. And I think it's as impressive. It only took just not even five minutes. No kidding, right? Yesterday not even five was, minutes. Uh, forever. And yesterday was just, wow, it was like tryouts, I think. Kahapon on Tagal took us a long time yeah. to get it yesterday. And then we had a bunch of bites, too. Yeah. I can't believe you got that all by yourself. So like you're sifting it, John, so that you get like the ant bodies apart from the eggs. What are you doing? Tinatalo tapay. Tinalis mo yung mga mm -hmm. langgam na. So she's separate by doing that. She's separating the. I guess that's how you do rice. Yeah. She's yeah. Separating the actual ant bodies from the eggs themselves. Yung mga maliit tal yung Pwede. magiging malaki rin yun. Oh sir. I asked her the small ones. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. Um, oh, there they go. Tossing the small ones as well. They're gonna get to be that size. Look at those ants, r r subdued easily. You she says they like the bodies in there because it gives it that little citrus fun. Yeah, it is good actually. But Would you? It was really good. Yeah. Box. I was saying, mm. very clean tasting. Mm, oh, patis in there or fish sauce. Interesting, huh? This is all going to be a more savory yeah, dish than we were used to yesterday. In the steamed one. 
She says whenever the it evaporates all mm -hmm. liquid, then it's ready. Oh, okay. You could be forgiven into thinking this looks like quinoa salad. But if you look really closely, it's really a bunch of ant eggs with some mixed in ants and um, some tomatoes, some ginger, and some fish sauce. So it really smells just like the aromatics that are in here. Tomato, ginger, and fish sauce. Uh, and it smells really good. It doesn't really smell like anything like the steamed um, eggs from yesterday because it had more of a banana leaf smell that it was steaming in. The big punch. It reminds me of, it looks like corned beef hash too. And it's kind of like prepared like corned beef hash. Quinoa salad. So we got some ant eggs. It looks like we got some minced up ants, tomato, ginger, some garlic, all mixed in, flavored with fish sauce. Hmm. How would I describe this? It reminds me like an Asian corned beef hash, mm -hmm. kind of mixed with a Thai beef salad, and a quinoa salad put all together. I mean, it's a very protein-filled dish. Mm -hmm. With that said, this is... Both ant egg dishes are really good. Which would you prefer, this one or the one yesterday? Um, I think for me, I like the naturalness of the ant eggs. Yesterday gave me more earthy, more... Uh, mm -hmm. an earthy, nutty flavor with the sweetness. Yes. And it's the white natural. corn flavor too. White corn with some banana leaf flavor. Yeah. It that's reminds us of a Filipino dessert that's yeah. called suman, which mm -hmm. is glutinous rice that's steamed in um, a banana leaf. Except it's a little more guilt-free because there's less bo less body. Yep. Uh, and we're I'm really interested in trying it more mature because maybe it gives a little more of the creaminess and more body to the egg rather than it just like popping off like a hollow egg. So that's what I think like the verdict is. If we had to choose, I think we would take the ant egg custard, but it's also a very good preparation of it. And we've seen a lot of ant egg recipes out there that call for different ingredients and such. So this mm -hmm. is more of the savory, the meaty type of ant egg dish. Yesterday could have passed for a dessert. Yeah, right? yeah that, that's definitely a dessert type of ant egg dish. So let us know what you think in the comments about eating ant eggs. It's a sustainable protein. Um, so, and again, Ilocanos have been eating this for, you know, who knows, time immemorial, I guess. Uh, as long Where as there's when? been an earth, I, fa I think. <laughs> because, again, Ilocanos, you know, very pragmatic people. They'll make use of the land, whatever is available to them. So ant eggs, a very sustainable point of protein. And of course, ants build their nests very quickly. You have ants will like reproduce very quickly too. So, you know, it's not like you're shattering the ecosystem here. So, and of course, the you know everyone says, hey, eat more insect protein. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice, rich part of protein. I don't know if it will fill you up like crazy, but I think if you cook more of these and harvest a bunch of ant nests, you'll get plenty of protein from them, and make a really good meal out of it. So. Yeah, I think that ends in this video. Um, put it in the comments, you know, what you guys think of yeah, about eating ant eggs. Um, were you repulsed by it? Would you be welcome to eat it? Um, you know, if you guys already have recipes, why don't you share as well in the comments? And of course, if you like this video, um, give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe for more food and travel videos. And then, of course, share it with your friends because, you know, sharing is caring and all that good stuff. And some of us need to eat more than this, you know, because, you know, <laughs> let's face it. We're not, we're going to be very scrawny and thin and, you know, emaciated if we don't eat more uh, protein. That's more, let's say, like beef or <laughs> more of that goat or whatever. So anyway, signing off, guys, and uh, see you on the next video. P.S. guys, this you really need to eat this with rice if you're going to cut away from the saltiness. Or, just tone it down on the fish sauce a little bit, then I think we got something perfect. But, again, yep. we're enjoying this. It's really good. That tomato, it's some um, um, garlic flavor, the ginger, very nice. And, actually, these ants, when you cook them, are not that sour either. But I think it's because of the fish sauce savoriness and with the medium. So, once again, signing off, guys. Just want to put that little note in there. So... Do the like, subscribe, share thing, and I'll see you in the next one. How weird. Guys, another PPS. <laughs>
you need to eat this with rice so it's such it's it's such, such a revelation but it's the weird it's it's so straightforward and so simple it's like it slaps you like you idiot of course you needed that but the flavor is so different it's completely different it's flavor. completely different so you know what we thought our chef was like oh i made it too um salty no actually she cook it just about how you're supposed to eat it you're supposed to eat it with rice so you see there's a lot of ants in here there's quite a bit of egg and the first thing that i tasted right off the bat was that beautiful corn sweetness white corn sweetness from that egg custard so and and then you get the the sourness from from the ant meat right there with all the aromatics it all blends together all with rice so you know i may have been critical before about that but you know what this is neck and neck now that's kind of as if the rice is a canvas yes and you can taste the saltiness the yes. sweetness and then the the tanginess of the little ants yeah it's really good actually with the rice it is surprisingly a beautiful taste when you put it with the rice if you eat it by yourself it's too much mm -hmm. um it's like a crunchy corned beef hash it's kind of like has sandy bits or something like that but wow this is very good very savory but you do get those ant flavors you want for that sweetness and such okay that's really the end of the video guys this is actually mind-blowingly good mind-blowingly good once you cut, cut get that some of that rice it needs to be white rice to cut away that saltiness it really opens up avenues of flavor and so i'm gonna say this is equally as good as the custardy dish and um, yeah you could you could fill up a meal with just eating ant eggs so you know what gordon ramsay don't take this dang dish all right I, <laughs> and sell it for 30 dollars or something like that and be like the gastronomic uh find their discovery of the 21st century in western cooking no 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 so okay signing off for the third and the last time on this video and i'll see you guys in the next one like subscribe share and remember empire never ended <laughs>